Good morning. Today's video is called Mastering the Gutenberg Navigation Block because one of the biggest changes you're going to notice when you start using full site editing in 2022 is how you create your WordPress menus. They've completely changed from the old menu system. So I'm going to take you step by step how the new navigation block works. There are a few things that are initially confusing, but once you understand those and I'll guide you through what those are, it's incredibly flexible and incredibly powerful. Let's get into it. Block of the week, block of the week. Yeah, block of the week. Which block is it going to be? Well, you will have to stick around, my friend, and maybe you will see. Right, before I dive into the new menu system, a very quick recap on the old menu system, which is here. This is the classic menu system, and it's very simple. You see your pages over here on the left. You can add them by clicking this Add to Menu button, and then they appear over on the right, and then you can change the order of them by dragging them up and down. And top to bottom equals left to right on your site. So it's very, very simple to understand, but it's abstracted from the actual website. So you don't really see what these are gonna look like until you've hit save and gone to look at the website. So let's go and look at the new menu system now. There are two possible scenarios where you may need to create a menu in full site editing. The first one is, imagine you have already an existing website that's been built using the classic menu system. You want to upgrade that site to full site editing. And so you need to build that new menu using full site editing. That's scenario number one. The second scenario is where you've got a brand new website and you want to create a brand new system using full site editing. So I'm going to take you step by step each one of those. Okay, so scenario one is where I've actually already built my menu system using the classic menu system and I've activated a full site editing theme and you can see what's happened up here. My pages are alphabetical. Now there is some talk about actually bringing those classic menus into a full site editing theme, uh, but we need to fix this up. So I'm going to click on edit site, which accesses me to the full site editing mode, the dashboard, and that's going to take me back to full site editing. And once that loads up, you need to click on the W in the top left. And you'll see down here, you've got site, templates, template parts. We want to go into template parts. That's where we'll find the header, which is where our navigation block will live. Click on that. And here we go. Here's our header up here. Now you can see it's kind of pre-filled. Well, it hasn't pre-filled, but it's given me a ghosted version of our menu system. And if we look at our blocks, this is key here where you're going to be using the navigation block is to use this list view extensively. It's going to make your life so much more clear. And can you see what we've got here? We've got the site title, which is this one here, navigation, and we've actually got a site tagline over there. So I'm just going to move that back. We don't have anything listed in there, which, which is why nothing's showing. But we want to edit the navigation block. So I'm going to click on navigation here. Now, as soon as you do that, you'll have some options in this top toolbar here. Now, what I would probably recommend you do is you just fix that top toolbar up here because otherwise it's going to get in the way of your navigation block. So it's just you click on these three dots in the top right and select top toolbar and you see it just clears it out so it's up here it's much easier to work with so that's the first good tip for you then you're faced on here with two options which are actually our two scenarios you can start select an existing menu or you can start with an empty menu so we're going to start with an existing menu it's pretty straightforward click on that and that's going to list all the menus that you've already built you'll see they'll be listed here as classic menus so i'm just going to select my primary menu which is the one i've already built my classic menu and that's going to bring that menu into that page for me. There we go, it's brought that menu in. Can you see over here on the left? Again, this is why the list view is so important to work with. I would just keep it open the whole time when you're building your menus. It's gonna make your life so much easier. It's actually brought in these other blocks, so a home block about, but these are actually uh, these are pages essentially what we're linking to, and I'm gonna show you how you can add these. But what's beautiful about the list view is you can use it to drag and drop these up and down. So you can actually move these around just using the list view. There is another way, which I'll show you in a few minutes, but to be honest, the list view is kind of the easiest way because you see them all the time. Next up, I want to show you how you start with a brand new menu. And a tip for you here is to actually open your pages in, in, in a new tab. Because one of the things that's not quite as intuitive in the new menu system is you can't see a list of all your pages, which I really liked in the classic menu system. So I just, you know, I would just open them in a new tab. Obviously, if you know what they are, then you don't need to do this. But for me, I think that's quite a nice idea. Just so you can refer to what pages you want to add. But let's go back to the menu we're gonna select start empty here, and that's gonna start you off with your basically blank menu, and you're gonna have a little plus here, and that's gonna start your first menu item. So I'm gonna click add block. Now, the main blocks you're gonna start with are really your pages. So you, you've got other blocks down here in terms of search and social icons, which I'm gonna come back to. 
but really all you have to do is search here for the page that you want to add. So I know I've got a page called home. So I'm going to search for home and that's going to find my home page. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing because you're kind of then just faced with we've added a page link, but what to do next? You'll see in your list view over on the left, you've got navigation and home. So what you need to do here, the simplest way to do this is literally just hit return, hit return. And that's going to give you the placeholder to add your next link. So this time I'm going to write, I'm going to search for about us because I know I have a page called about us. At least I think I do. And I'm going to add that one and the same again, you just hit return after each one. So once you get used to this, it's pretty straightforward. You just hit, you add your link and then you hit return. You search for the page title. It'll list it in your drop down here and you add it. Okay. So I'm just going to just add one more hit return, search for contact. I think I have a contact page. So that's my base menu uh, built starting from scratch. Next, I'm going to show you how you can add drop downs and then other elements into that menu. This is how you add sub menus or drop down menus to your full site editing menu. It's pretty straightforward. So you'll see I've now got a blog in my menu and under that blog, I want to add some post categories. So all you do is click onto the menu item itself and then you'll see this little icon up here in the floating toolbar. Now I've fixed my floating toolbar to the top. Yours may show over here, but all you do is click on that. This is the sub menu item. You just click add sub menu and that's going to automatically add you a sub, sub menu placeholder. And now you can add your blocks as you did before. So I've actually created some categories in here, one called winter. And this is actually searching for post categories. Can you see in the list here, it's telling me these are posts, but that's actually the, the sort of category level I want. So you just click add that. And then if I wanted to add another one, I have one called summer here. I can do it very easily. So adding drop down menus is an absolute breeze. If you want to delete any of these, they are just blocks again. So let's say I don't want to show the winter one. I can just click on winter. And again, this is why the list view is so great. Another tip here, you can access this list view in two ways. If you click on the top level navigation block up here, you can also ac access the list view with this floating list view. And they're kind of the same actually. So generally I'd say just work in this list view over here. You can always keep it open and it's easy to work with. But if you want to remove one of these, it's as simple as clicking on it. And then I click on these three dots and I can remove that custom link. And the summer one's still there. You'll see if I hover over it but the winter one's deleted. If you want to move a menu item to the left or to the right, it's very straightforward. There are actually two ways to do this. You just click into the menu item. In this case, I want to move the about menu item. You can either use the toolbar up here. You'll see there's just a left and a right arrow. So I can just move it along to the right like that. Or you can just use the list view. Again, I would recommend the list view because I would just keep that open when you're working in your menus. It's just gonna make your life so much easier. If you want to add a search box, or a search icon to your menu. That's pretty straightforward now. So again, make sure you selected the menu item where you want it to appear after. So in this case, I've selected about in my list view. Then I'm gonna hit return. And again, by hitting return, that prepares that space for me to add an item. Now we can either add our pages, posts, or categories like we've done before, but you'll see at the bottom down here, we've got some other options. The two most interesting ones really for, for me today are search and social icons, which I'm gonna come on to. But this is how you add the search box. You just add, click on search, and that's gonna add the box in here. Now with the search box, you have a number of different options. First is you can add an optional placeholder. So you could type in some words, whatever you like there. So I've typed in search my site. Then you will see in your toolbar, you also have another bunch of options up here as well. So you can do things like add a label if you want to. I'm not going to in this instance, so I'm just gonna make sure that's not turned on. This middle option here, lets you change the position of the button. So whether it's outside, inside, or no button at all, can you see how the little search icon button has now disappeared? If you do choose a button, then also you can um, have some button text or a button icon. So you've got three nice little options there. If you want to add social icons to your menu, that's very straightforward now. Again, use the list view here. It's gonna make your life easier. So click on the block where you want the social icons to appear afterwards. So in my case, that's about. Then just hit return. That prepares the ground for us to add our social icons. And you'll see your social icons block here in this drop down. So click on social icons and that you'll see again in the list view over here, it's added the social icons block. Then we just need to add our social icons. So I'm gonna add just Twitter and Facebook today. So I'm gonna click add block. There's my Twitter one. You can search for other social icons here as well. I'm gonna add Twitter but we still need to put the link to our Twitter account. So you click on the Twitter icon and then just put the full link to your personal Twitter account. For, for me, that's twitter.com forward slash 
Poodle Press, I'm probably spelling that wrong, and then just hit return and that adds that. If you want to add another one, use the list view here. Click on the social icons top level block and then it prepares the ground for you to add another one and we can click add block here and add our Facebook one and repeat the process for that one. Here's a good tip, if you want to add space between your menu items and let's say your social media icons in this case, you can do that as well. So what we're gonna do is actually add a special spacer block between the about menu item and our social icons. So we're gonna select the about menu item in our list view and here's the tip what you need to do. You hit return and that's gonna add the space for our custom link again, but then we're gonna jump up here and can you see up here we can actually change the type of block that we're adding. So we're gonna transform this and you'll see one of the options here is the spacer block. Click on that and that adds a special kind of spacer block here where we can actually just make space between our social media icon and our menu items. You'll see there's also a dialog box over here on the right where you can actually put in the width if you wanna be really precise in terms of the width that you're putting in probably not 45,000. So there we go, that's how you can add space between your menu items. If you want to add your email address or your phone number, you can also do that by using custom links. This isn't the most intuitive thing in the world, so I'm gonna show you this step by step. So highlight the block where you want this to appear afterwards. So I'm gonna select contact and hit return, just like we have done. Then in this search box, you need to search for custom, and you'll see the option there is to actually add the custom link. Now, this is the unintuitive bit really. What you need to do now is click on the little hyperlink in your toolbar, click on that, and now you've got access to the custom link. Then click on the pencil. Now you can actually change your text. So in this case, I might want to, let me put my glasses on for this. I might want to put my email, jamie at poodlepress.com. And then in the URL, because this is an email link, I'm gonna change that to a mail to colon jamie at poodlepress. Dot com and hit return and there we go now I've got my nice custom link linking to my email address you could do the same thing with a phone number by using the Mobi um, pre prefix as well and then finally we have some design options but the trick here to see these options you must 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 click on the navigation block the top level block on the left because if you're down within your menu items you won't see any options related to those menu items so make sure you click on the top level navigation then you'll see all the options over on the right. You'll see there's quite a few options down here. So we've got justification. Just beware with these justification ones. I've noticed with a few themes, you can see on this theme, it, you can change it and nothing, nothing changes. So some themes, it seems like the position is fixed. It depends on the theme. You've also got orientation. So you might have a theme where you want a vertical menu so you can change them. I suspect for most themes, we'll want the horizontal one. Then you've got your mobile menu options which they call display overlay menu. So you can either turn that off so it doesn't show a mobile menu. You can have it show on the mobile view or you can have it always on. And actually, if you turn it always on, then you can you can see what it's gonna look like for real. Um, and then you've got whether you want your sub menus to open or click or to show the arrow. Can you see on my blog menu item here, I've got a little arrow. If I don't wanna show that, I can turn that off. I suspect that might be theme specific as well. I'll discover more as we roll these out. Then you've got some colors so you can change the text color of your menu items or the background color. Let me just show you the background color change. See how the background color is changing here. Again, some of these options for your sub menus I think will change depending on your theme. I've used a few full site editing themes where you don't see these sub menu options. So that might be theme specific. And then finally at the bottom down here, you have some typography options, line height, decoration, or the letter case. So letter case, for example, is things like whether you want it uppercase and things like that not massively exciting, but they're in there if you need them. So there we go, you've got some nice options to customize both the primary menu items and your sub menu items. That's how you can change the design. So I hope you found that useful, and if you watched it all the way through, well done. You'll now be in a good position to master your full site editing menus. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be fantastic if you could hit the like button now, because it really, really helps spread the word of the channel. Also, as you may know, every time you do hit that like button, our cats get a little treat. So thanks again. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button because every time I release a new video, you'll be notified. I'm doing about two Gutenberg videos a week at the moment, so I'm really leaning into it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.